What's up guys, my name is Natalie, and if you are new here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Okay, today I want, I want to talk about one thing, and that one thing being squats. All right, squats used to be my strongest lift out of squat bench and deadlift. And now, thankfully, thank God, my deadlift has surpassed my squat, but my squat has gone through just a very rocky relationship, and uh, we finally made it out. We're in a good spot now. Squats are going well. And the goal of this video is to go over three of the common mistakes that I used to do, and I see a lot of other lifters doing. So if you're a newer lifter, or if you are experiencing maybe some pain in your hips or your knees, or struggle hitting depth, I plan to go over three of the most common mistakes I still kind of see, and all three I have done, and I'm sure I've done more mistakes, but for the sake of the time, that we're gonna do the top three today. Now, when I talk about squatting, I've gone through a few different injuries. I would say all of them probably stemmed from three of these things, uh, in addition to other factors as well, such as intensity, volume, things like that. But the technique breakdown that I experienced over the years definitely led to my hips feeling terrible and my knees sometimes feeling a bit overwhelmed. So the three issues would be uneven feet, number one. Number two, sitting back, trying to sit my hips back and down in the squat. And then number three, having a rib cage flare, or as some people like to say, like a big chest going down to the hole. Those were three mistakes that caused me pain, issues with depth, and overall just awkwardness in my squat. My squat never looked concrete, it never looked strong, stable. My foot pressure was a little whoo here and there, you know, I never had a really decent squat until more recent. Obviously squats are a work in progress, as are all of our lifts. You're not gonna get perfect after one day of training, okay? This is a process. These are the three things I wanna talk about today. Foot setup, sitting back into the squat, and having an excessive rib cage flare. Now, the two points go hand in hand. Hip positioning to the hole ties very closely with how your rib cage is either flared or not, so I wanna talk about those two together. But for the first uh, part of this video, talking about the foot setup, that's super straightforward and really an easy fix. Okay, so training footage circa 2019, we're gonna go ahead and look at my foot position and how it was so uneven. So uneven. All right, so let's go ahead and watch the clip. This is from a small local meet in 2019. But my foot positioning, left foot is in front of the right foot like that. Okay, not too bad. Maybe that's not going to be an issue. Maybe I could just squat that way and not have a problem with it, right? Let's go ahead and watch a training video. Yes, I'm taking this video from a side angle, but if you look closely, you can see my hips coming back severely towards my left side versus between legs evenly. And even looking at a high bar squat, you can see that kind of shift knowing that my legs aren't even. My feet on the ground are not even. Now there's a very simple solution for this. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to feel the best, but just draw a line on the ground in chalk, grab some tape, line up your feet wherever you are and make sure that they're even. Yes, our bodies are not gonna be perfectly symmetrical left to right, but if you can at least even your feet in your squat and have an even distribution of pressure in your feet, then you should feel so much better when you squat. I do not recommend going to the commercial gym and staring yourself dead in the eyes in a mirror you should not be kind of moving your gaze around in your squat. You should not be looking at yourself being like, damn, my hair looks really good today. That's not what you want to do. And you shouldn't be trying to look at your feet as you're squatting either. So using a mirror, throw that idea out, grab a piece of tape, do some chalk, and just have a nice straight line and work from there. But that's tip number one. If you have uneven feet, if you are squatting like this, it is not going to feel good. So make sure your feet are even, okay? Now, the next two things I want to discuss are the idea of sitting back and down into a squat and the rib cage flare. And what I mean by rib cage flare is when you're squatting, your ribs, instead of being almost aligned over your hips, are instead like this. Like you're flaring your chest out, trying to throw it back in the club, like you're not very stacked. And the reason why the rib flaring and the sitting back into the whole cue doesn't mesh well with me is because if you're, if you're trying to sit back and then down, you're naturally going to wanna to keep your chest up so you don't fold like a Barbie doll. So you aren't crushing yourself. So instead of thinking about sitting back and down, what I would cue to one of my lifters would be, think about pulling your knees forwards because if your knees are coming forwards over your toes, your hips are gonna to come down, not back, not sideways, 
down naturally with your nice brace or with your rib cage hopefully aligned and down to the hole and hit depth. Because if you're thinking about sliding back and just pushing your butt backwards, how are you gonna hit depth? You're gonna have to go a long ways back and a long ways down if you're gonna do both. I understand that sometimes back and down works for some lifters. If it works for you, that's great. But for me, that caused me to have a very arched rib cage, which then pinched both my hip flexors for years, did not allow me to hit the best depth that I could hit. So let's take a look at some examples of how both these kind of mistakes made my squat look a little odd and possibly caused me a little bit of discomfort. So let's take a look again at that 3.30 video I should, showed earlier about my foot positioning being off. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of my squat now. So I am adjusting my hips at the start and then I'm moving back. My first instinct, I'm trying to shoot my hips back and then I think about my knees bending because I can't just do a RDL here I have to, or a good morning, I have to bend my knees and that's the start of my squat. And if you stop the video, look at my rib cage positioning. I have my chest flared, my hips are back, I'm not hitting depth or it is questionable, I would say, but it is not a very comfortable squat when my brace feels like it is blowing out of me because I'm not able to keep a stacked position and my core feel super like a 360 expanse there and really feel settled. So how do you fix these? Well, like I said, number one, uh, instead of thinking about pushing your hips back and then down, think about your knees coming forwards over your toes because that's how you're gonna break from the start of your squat. Here's one of my more recent lifting, training, lifts, whatever. Nothing extra. I'm not going back and slowing, trying to find depth and then going up. I'm confidently breaking my knees, letting my hips naturally fall down. Depth is a lot easier since I'm not trying to go back and have like this flared action. Um, and it's just a nice time overall. Now I want to address the ribcage flaring a little bit more because ribcage flaring is not inherently bad if it is causing you pain like it was in my hip flexors and it's causing you issues with reaching depth, then that's time to address it. If you're able to reach depth with a little bit of rib cage flare and have no pain, don't worry about it. That's not a mistake that you're doing. If you're fine with that and that feels good for you, don't overstress it. Don't try to get a perfect technique just because someone on the internet said so. Like I said, when I would flare my rib cage in my squat, I would really try to find depth and I would end up pinching both my hips and have like some hip flexor pain uh, at the front of my hip every time I squatted, no matter whether it was like high bar or low bar. High bar was a little bit better, but low bar always felt some pain. So let's take a look at another video. This is front facing. You can really see how my chest is like completely straight. <laughs> like you can read the logo on my t-shirt in the hole. I am not whatsoever leaned over at an angle where my rib cage would be in line with my pelvis. I am like here. So even though I'm in a low bar position, any lift is an ongoing process where you're going to tweak things, get better at things, progress sometimes, and then progress. Uh, but really when I started working with Steve from PR's Performance, he noted that I was looking straight up at the sky when I squat. Like I said, you can notice from that video I just showed that I would look up as I squatted. I've always looked up. And what he pointed out to me is that your head is attached directly to your T-spine. So if you are going to look up, your upper back is probably gonna wanna go with it. And then that's gonna cause your cage to flare out. So if you're up like that, that is how your squat is going to look coming down into the hole. Now, a simple cue that he used uh, on me to fix this issue was to not look up like, towards the heavens, but to instead look almost down towards the floor at a distance. So not directly down to the floor, though you can if you prefer that. If you feel comfortable doing that, that's fine. Slightly looking down, lowering your gaze so that instead of here, you are here, that helped the most because I wasn't worried about flaring my chest. I wasn't worried about anything at all. I was just looking down to the floor. And that's why I said earlier, if you're in a commercial gym, don't look around when you're squatting. Please just look in one spot. You should be a stable, a stable object. You shouldn't be just turning around looking everywhere. So to alleviate this rib cage flaring, all I simply did was adjust my gaze from up to down and that allowed me ton more comfort into the hole. Not only were my knees leading my squat, but now instead of feeling like I was traveling backwards because of this rib cage flare, I felt like I could come straight down into the hole without any sort of discomfort. For the first time, I think three years, I squatted for the first time without a hip pinch, which is huge. And that simply stemmed from being a much better hip position in the hole. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of my recent training footage. So notice my head position is now down. My knees break the squat depth. Uh, is undeniable, it's pretty easy. 
175 kilos, so a little bit heavier. Looked a little bit harder. There was some technique breakdown, but again, my ribcage was not flared. I was able to keep a really nice brace um, and have no issues kind of popping out of the hole and had zero hip pain. Now let's compare this to a similar weight. Here is another 175 from a year prior or so, or something like that. Watch the depth closely. Ribcage is out. Depth is iffy. Left leg is in. <laughs> And we did our best there. Now, those were the main three mistakes that I see. But there's a fourth. Ha ha! Surprise, surprise. There's always one more. And I want to address this because I get a DM from usually women at least like once a, once a week, probably on this. And they always ask, how did I correct uh, my severe knee valgus, which is my knees coming into my squat. I still do that. It's fine. Okay. Short answer is fine. But how did I correct my knee valgus in my squat? and not have my knees come in when I try to drive out of the hole. Now, since I get this question so much, the answer will shock you. It is not using a hip band or a any sort of band around your knees. Don't do it. Please, stop. Back in like, I don't know when this was filmed, I don't know, Kia back in like 1989, but uh, here's me squatting with a hip circle band. Uh, obviously, it's doing a lot. You can see that I have no technical issues whatsoever. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm making jokes because at the time I probably thought this was going to help. But as you can see, I still have a notable hip shift. My knees are still traveling inwards, even with a band. The kind of logic that stems from wanting to use a hip circle, or some coaches recommend using a hip circle, is because the reason that your knees cave inwards is because you have weak glutes. Quote unquote, weak glutes. Now, that's probably not the case. In, I would say, 99% of the cases, you probably don't have a weak butt. Um, I've seen girls who hip thrust like 500 pounds have knee bogus, like it is okay. But this idea is that you wear a hip circle, your body will feel the tension of it trying to pull your legs in, so your abductors will push out and you'll have more strength, so you'll even out your leg drive out of the, out of the hole. I believe that's the logic that most people kind of, kind of attend to the hip circle. Now, why won't this work? Okay, it's a band. Uh, it has like 20 pounds of tension in it, and you're not actually correcting the issue that could be a hand, which could be maybe you have too out of a stance, or maybe you're doing too much weight that you're not trained for, or perhaps you just have super, super strong adductors. Because the reason your knees cave in is because you have adductors. They have to work in the squat. Your adductors are going to pull your knees inwards. So instead of looking at the hip circle to cure this, because it's just a really like a band-aid. It's, it's not even a band-aid. It is like a piece of grass on a wound, like trying to cover it. It may feel like you're really working your abductors, your butt, but in reality, kind of doing that and maybe getting a little bit more butt stimulus. And if you're a general gym goer, you might like this. Okay, that's fine. But if you're a power lifter, uh, you need to focus on your stance. Do you have a super wide stance and your biomechanics just simply cannot handle that? Like if you're starting super wide and your biomechanics are like, oh, oh no, and they want to come in and then go out, you should probably adjust your stance and bring it a little bit closer. Or if you are experiencing zero pain, zero discomfort, um, no tears that the internet will tell you that's going to happen if you have any inward caving of your knees, um, then you're probably fine. You probably don't need to change anything. Good form, like I mentioned previously, with the letting your knees travel forwards down to the hole, um, not having a super extended rib cage, and just focusing on your brace, then having a little bit of that knee cave is going to be okay. You're going to be just fine, okay? So, all in all, I addressed Three things to quote unquote fix my squat. I focused on foot position, having an even setup before I even start the squat. Having two, not thinking about trying to travel back with my butt or my hips. And just instead breaking of the knees and dropping down like nice and relaxed. And then three, also not looking up to the heavens and having a super exposed flared rib cage and just kind of looking down and letting just everything remain stacked in a nice clean brace. Um, this has not only contributed to me being pain-free for the first time like ever in a squat, um, but also having a super deep squat, which is also relatively new for me, and being more consistent. So I hope that these three, and the bonus of the knee caving, knee valgus issue, um, could be helpful to you. Take a look at your squat next time. Uh, film it, don't look at the mirror, but film your squat and kind of see, okay, do I look like I am stacked in a good position? to get a really strong brace am I able to drive out of the hole well and have um, a really strong 
center of gravity and feel overall well in my spot, take a look at it. See how you're doing. But if this is helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Truly appreciate it, guys. Check out some of my other videos both to my old lifting. That was a lot of fun. And then I have some lighthearted TikTok content for anyone out there who wants a little bit of a chuckle. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.